So guys, this is my new to me 1994 Subaru Sambar. It is fresh into the country. It's only been stateside for a few months now. It was imported in this year. Um, these are extremely hard to get your hands on in the US. Uh, well, not extremely. There are several companies and other independent importers that are importing these vehicles now, uh, mainly to sell to farmers and ranchers for agricultural use. Um, they're a cheap and reliable substitute for a UTV. Uh, some of the higher end UTV side by sides, you know, can get up to $20,000 or more. I'm sure I haven't priced them in a long time, but I know they're outrageously expensive. Or these can be had for a couple thousand dollars. And depending on the state you live in, you can actually register, tag these and drive them on the road. Uh, luckily for me, being here in South Carolina, uh, this car was imported in and titled in North Carolina, so I was able to take the title to the DMV yesterday, or actually this morning, and uh, got this titled as a truck. I have a farm plate on it because I'm technically going to be using it as a piece of farm equipment, you know, you know making small trips and small hauls around. Uh, when I don't want to take the Duramax, I can take this little fuel saver. I've been wanting one of these things for years and finally was able to find one and uh, we're going to have lots more content coming out on it uh, as we go over it mechanically and uh, maybe customize it a little bit. So for those of you that are not familiar with the Subaru Sandbar, which is basically all of you viewers here in North America because uh, we don't get this vehicle other than a, a rare site you see that has been imported. So they're a little right-hand drive, utilitarian little basic cabin chassis trucks uh, used by uh, carpenters, tradesmen in Japan. Uh, it's an easy little runabout in cities, easy to get in and out of narrow alleyways around other cars in the city and maneuver. Um, it's fairly useful. Uh, the maximum capacity for the bed is 350 kilograms, which uh, roughly translates out to about 770 pounds. Um, the bed, if I recall correctly when I measured it, is a little over six feet long and I believe four and a half foot wide with the bed sides up. A uh, neat little feature about this truck is your sides and your tailgate all fold down and are all removable on this. Uh, so you can convert it into a flatbed. Uh, you can drop the sides down with the chains up to make your bed wider for wider loads. And uh, you know, it's really uh, a jack of all trades, so to say, of a little pickup. There's lots of little tie down anchor points all down the side, all underneath. So, you know, it was designed with work in mind. It wasn't something, you know, for uh, to get just a ride around in. Maybe uh, that's what I got it for <laughs> to play with, but uh, its original purpose when sold in Japan, you know, it's straight out a work vehicle. So being that it's a stripped out, bare bones, utilitarian work vehicle, there's not many creature comforts in this particular sandbar. This is pretty much a base model. There's not very many trim packages or options you have when ordering these. Um, the main options that you can order that this one does not have that I'm aware of for this chassis, which this is a KS4 1994 model, is the optional factory air conditioning. This truck, unfortunately, is not equipped for air conditioning. Oh, how I wish it was being this July here in South Carolina. All this week is touching 100 degrees and the humidity is through the roof. I'm pouring sweat again here, trying to film this video and it's 7.30 in the afternoon clouded up, thunder in the distance, about to be a big thunderstorm through here. So I would love to have air conditioned. I might add air condition later, depending on how difficult it is. I'm not gonna be doing a factory install. I'll do some kind of retrofit if I do anything at all. Uh, other than that, the only other option I've seen is a hydraulic dump bed. This one does not have, unfortunately. I would like to have the hydraulic dump bed, although with a 770 uh, pound uh, capacity for the bed. I don't know how much I, uh, material I could actually haul uh, to dump back out with it. Uh, it would be more for the novelty of it. 
Other than that, as for options, the other options that this one does not have, it is not an eCVT transmission. It is a stick, so baser model, and it is a non-supercharged. Yes, you can get these little trucks with superchargers fuel injected. Uh, unfortunately, this one is a carbureted, naturally aspirated. Uh, so it has, I believe, 45 horsepower. Uh, these are not like traditional Subaru vehicles. These are a completely different breed. Uh, they don't use symmetrical all-wheel drive. They have a on-the-fly push-button four-wheel drive system, and they do not use boxer engines. They have an inline four-cylinder. Subaru calls the Clover 4, and if I recall correctly, the engine code is at EN07. Uh, that might be the engine code. It might be something else. I've seen other numbers of uh, FE38, FE37, so I'm not exactly sure, but I know it's a Clover 4 which is a 660 cc or 0.66 liter inline four. So extremely tiny engine, basically a motorcycle engine. Uh, top speed, I cannot find a general consensus on. I guess it depends on if you've got the air condition on and you're going downhill, but I've seen that the top speed is anywhere between 65 and 87 miles per hour. Uh, I guess that believes, uh, I guess that depends on if it's a manual transmission, automatic transmission, uh, supercharged NA, or if it's this model or a modern one. They are still producing these. You can go and buy in Japan a 2020 model. They actually do have an extended cab version, which gives you about yay more room behind the seat. Uh, they have a full crew cab, which is quite ridiculous looking. They have a service truck with a service box on the back, and they have a sister to this platform, uh, the Sambar Dias, I believe is how it's pronounced, D-I-A-S wagon. Uh, it's basically a four passenger, uh, little tiny minivan. And uh, in Japan, they have these cool little conversion kits you can put on them and make them look like an old Volkswagen bus. Uh, but that aside, we're talking about the Sambar. I'm gonna get off on little tangents as usual. Uh, as far as I know, this is pretty much a base model, but I believe that the owner, before they took it to auction, did some work to it and modified it uh, appearance-wise. Uh, the front bumper, I believe, is off one of the DS wagons because it has uh, fog lights and it is a silver-painted bumper. Most of these sandbars are all uh, crystal white, I believe is the color, but just white like a regular work truck in the US. And most of them have steel wheels. This one does have Subaru aluminum wheels on it. I believe they are as well off of a DS wagon. Uh, when we get into the interior, I believe that one of the seats has been changed out from a DS wagon, but I'm not sure. Uh, it might just be from a newer model uh, sandbar because they are vinyl seats, but one has a fake uh, print on it and one is just uh, plain gray vinyl. One other thing I forgot to mention on upgrades are the side view mirrors. These are called the California mirrors. Uh, they're chrome and they're lower profile tucked in closer to the cab. Most of the sandbars uh, have a black uh, truck mirror that comes out away from the body on a lower mount and are black, not chrome. So obviously someone's upgraded this. It also has the little uh, wind deflectors for the windows. I don't think many of the sandbar trucks have them, but I'm pretty sure it's pretty common on the DS wagons. Uh, here you can get a look at that silver front bumper that I believe has been converted uh, because it does have fog lights, yet inside the cab there is no fog light switch. There is an aftermarket toggle switch installed, but the toggle switch doesn't seem to do anything. I'm assuming that they were in the process of hooking up these fog lights to work. Um, not sure. We'll get into that once uh, we start going over the truck and fully inspecting it and seeing what work it needs. I did inspect it before buying it, so I do, knew, I do know that I need four tires. I might hold off on the tires because I might be putting aftermarket wheels on it. I'm not sure yet uh, because right now, I don't know if you can see the profile, probably not from the camera angle, but the tires are insanely small as well as the wheels. It uses a 145 R12-6PR tire. So 12 inch wheel, and I believe it's three or four inches wide. Extremely, extremely small. It is really an odd sensation driving this thing because 
it's a cab over, but you're actually over the front axle. So it's kind of weird hanging out in the wind uh, driving this little sucker. That said, it's got great visibility, great maneuverability, especially in the US. I can basically uh, put two of these side by side in a traditional uh, travel lane in the US, and I could probably park three in a traditional parking space. I'll put some pictures up from earlier today when I was at Home Depot and uh, drew a crowd of uh, onlookers asking about my tiny little truck over parked in the contractor section. So from there, like I said, I believe we've got the upgraded stuff here and here and the wheels. Other than that, it pretty much seems to be box standard uh, sandbar, uh, you know, utilitarian work truck. Uh, from here, we'll go ahead and take a look at the inside. I'll show you the engine, start it up. Uh, we'll do a quick circle around the truck and uh, probably end out the video. This is just a quick introduction video. We'll get into the mechanicals and repair and so on driving it and all that stuff in future videos. Again, trying to cut this short because of the dark clouds and the thunder in the distance. So here we are at the interior. As I said, it is box standard. Uh, we've got a stick. Uh, no power steering, of course, with it being a uh, cab over. Um, I did forget to mention they added an aftermarket cup holder, which I'm kind of glad of because the only one it's got, uh, not actually a cup holder, is back behind the parking brake here. It's just a little cubby, but luckily it fits a bottle of water. Uh, so it is equipped with heat and defrost, but no air condition, as I said. So there's your heater controls as usual. Uh, there is an AM FM radio with a cassette, but it is a Japanese radio, so it works on short band FM, which is like uh, 60 to 90 FM. So it only picks up like a handful of high 80s uh, US FM stations in my area. Uh, that's the aftermarket toggle switch I was talking about that doesn't seem to do anything. I'm gonna dive into that later and uh, see what the deal is with that. Other than that, this, uh, like I said, pretty box standard. Uh, a neat little thing that's a little odd is the pedals. We're gonna, I'm gonna pick the camera up and go handheld to show you some stuff in the truck. So aside from my awesome little gorilla in overalls, uh, floor mats there, check out the pedals. There's our clutch, our brake, and our gas pedal. That is the funniest looking little gas pedal I've ever seen. I believe it's actually mounted on the side of the cab there and it hinges down. Uh, so pretty neat. We've got our fuel door release flap right there in front of the shifter. Here's our shifter. As I said, it's a five speed, but actually is got six forward gears with that extra low. Four wheel drive, push button, push the button going down the road and lock in the front differential. Parking brake, our little cubby. Uh, that's the paperwork for the import and the warranty information on the vehicle. Our passenger seat folds flat. We've got a little storage cubby back here. We've got an extra air filter for the car or the truck. Um, the jack, uh, things of that nature. It just clips down and pops up. Here's what I was talking about, about the seats. And we've got plain gray vinyl here and checkered vinyl there. Uh, very, very plain door cards, just vinyl and uh, a tiny little pocket there, door handle, uh, door pull, and your crank, glove box, two little four by six speakers, horn, no airbag. Uh, we got a speedometer, of course, in kilometers only. 77,000 and 101. I've drove 101 kilometers since I've gotten it. Fuel gauge, temperature gauge, uh, Four-wheel drive status comes on, a little light. Other than that, that's all you've got for instrumenta instrumentation. Got a whole bunch of little block-off panels here for options this thing does not have. Such little amount of room in the cab that our headrests are actually bolted to the body, straddling the rear window. But yeah, like I said, bare bones, a little utilitarian truck, but uh, I like it. I'm six foot four. I fit comfortably in the cab. I've got almost a foot of headroom to the roof.
a little interior light. And here we can get another look at the passenger side. Fairly large glove box, so pretty good amount of storage in there. And as I said, we got the storage behind the passenger seat when you fold it down in the little cubby. And uh, you know, other than that, for a very compact vehicle, it's not very cramped and uh, doesn't make you really feel claustrophobic. Here's something neat. I'm not exactly sure, but I believe this is uh, an annual inspection sticker, perhaps. We've got 12 here, so I'm assuming that's five. That's May, uh, May 31st, I guess, was uh, some kind of inspection or renewal process for the little vehicle. Pretty neat. This is a little packet I got with the vehicle. I'm not sure if this is uh, factory stuff or from the auto auction in Japan. I believe it's a combination of both. Uh, if I remember right, when I used Google Translate, this is like warranty and uh, a service booklet for keeping track of your service and uh, maintenance on the vehicle. And uh, I believe this is where the inspection was done in Japan, where it was inspected before going through the auction. Pretty neat as well. Like having that information. I wish I had an owner's manual for it, but uh, unfortunately that was not included. Uh, this is a, this is the export information. Whoop, the wind's gonna blow all this away. Uh, it was exported uh, May 1st, no, January 15th of uh, 2020. Engine model EN07, serial number, uh, or the model was a V slash KS4, as I said. Uh, Pacific Coast Auto Imports. Uh, Yokohama. Uh, export schedule date 31st of March 2020. And then there is our export certificate. So pretty neat to have the paperwork and things of that nature on a little JDM vehicle like this. So some of you may be wondering where in the world is the little engine in this vehicle? And this is pretty neat. So here's our tailgate. We got a keyhole here. Flip that down. Here's our engine, our little 660 cc, our transmission and our exhaust system. Pretty neat. Like I said, we'll get more into the mechanicals and servicing this thing in later videos. That's not your only access to your engine. Inside the bed, there is an access cover. Up here, there's an access cover you can take off to get to your carburetor intake and the whole top side of the engine transmission. So guys, it's getting really windy and dark and stormy right now. I'm gonna try to hurry up and finish this video up before it starts raining. So I'll show you the tailgate drop. Just like that, like a regular truck. But as I said, you can also come up here, unlatch and drop your bed side. You can drop both bedsides, and as I said before, they're on an open hinge like a Jeep door, so you can slide them forward and completely remove them if you want to as well. So here are our tiny, tiny little 12-inch wheels, our gas filler, our battery. I'm missing the battery cover, but I located a genuine Subaru one on uh, Amazon Japan. Going to order that. I think it's like $28. And our rear wheel. If you look through the bed there, you might be able to see it, but the spare tire is directly across the bat from the battery under the bedside on the driver's side of the truck. Here we are on the driver's side, and there you can see our little spare tire chilling under the bed in between the bed and the frame. As I said before, we've got plenty of little tie down areas. So anything you wanna haul, you've got plenty of places to secure it on the sides of the bed, underneath the bed, all over. You're not gonna lose your load hauling in this little truck. All right guys, that basically does it for this first little introduction video. I know we kind of rambled around talking about 
the truck and about the trucks in general and then showed you a couple little features on it. Uh, trying to get this thing done, filmed uh, before the storm unleashes on me. I wanna get it out to you guys cause I know most of you in the comments have been chomping at the bit to get some video footage, see more of this little truck. In future videos, as I said, we're gonna get in the mechanicals, uh, do some repairs cause we do have some repairs, maintenance things to catch up on the truck and uh, do some off-roading around the farm in it, see how capable it is, uh, you know, take some driving videos down the highway, around town, and uh, you know, just more content to come on our little Subaru Sandbar. With that said, thank you guys so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed and I'll see you in the next video.